One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Six by the great Wes Montgomery and I really enjoyed playing this tune it's one of my favorite tunes and Wes wrote such so many great tunes and I chose this tune specifically because it's one of these tunes that is well first of all I really I really enjoy using it as a as sort of a structure for melodic development and this is something that I try to instill in all my students and of course I always try to try to do in my playing is to try to develop a motif, motivic development. Um, so, how do we do this? Now, now some I've, I've heard players, you know, especially younger players, that you know they they play long, you know, some long ideas, but they don't know how to co connect motif to motif. So, if if I'm playing on a song like this, um, the first thing I like to think about is when when I I'll, I'll make a short idea small idea uh something like maybe very simple uh now when you have a like a g minor seven or you know we, of course we're working off the dorian but I, I i really love the sound of sixes and nines six and is a nine sound really great on a minor seven chord uh so maybe or um that might might be something nice to play now what am i going to do next Okay, so I have to remember that motif. Now, now I can think of it more in a scale sense where I can go uh and go down in the scale. Or one thing that I really like to do is just move down to the next string. That's pretty simple. So maybe something like or maybe I can go that's a nice little phrase and that that covers your g minor so now i can start a new motif 
as we do this cycle, you know, this famous West kind of cycle, getting us back to G. Uh, so we can do this. Then change strings right here. So that's going to bring us back to the G minor. So then change strings here. Okay. And then the other thing about motifs was is that we want to, first of all, be able to create motifs, but we also want to know where are the transitional points? Where do we put the longer lines uh, or the, the, the lines that have maybe, maybe a little bit more, um, maybe a longer line or, or a more interesting line to, to play? So that's, that's something that I try to think about in my playing. So when I hear the tune, uh, this is going to be kind of motivic development. Uh, and then, and, that, and that's really, really the most, the closest thing to improvising. So, uh, and then I, I'm really trying to motif here, and then here, and this, 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 um, well, this is really a two five off of the tritone substitution. You know, A flat being a tritone substitution, leading back to G, E flat, A flat. I usually maybe try to put some kind of a little filler line. You know. Uh, and and I'm just simply thinking of the E flat to G, very very similar. Or, you know, getting us back here. Uh, then motivic development again. So then I might think. Now this, when it comes to here to this two five one. Uh, uh, That's going to be usually a longer line there because that's getting us back. That's, that's a really good, strong transitional spot to get us back to the top of the tune. So, so, so he, check out how this might sound. So I'll, I'll take it a little slower. One, a two, a one, a two, three, four. you can kind of develop through those sections and you never really run into your like your sort of bag of tricks ideas because we're spending time just developing you know which is what I love to do and I, people tell me all the time they say man you know how how is it that you can just keep going on and going on and playing these longer solos and just developing and developing and it sounds so melodic well because I don't rely on licks so much uh, maybe it is licks, but it's they're short. They're short little ideas, and I try to connect them. And then, and then I'll I'll save my longer material for you know for those transitional spots. So that's what creates that sort of attention and release. You know, um, I never forget the time I was in New Orleans. Of course, that's my hometown. I don't live there any anymore since since uh, Katrina, but since Hurricane Katrina. But I remember I was. Um, I was standing at um, on St. Charles Avenue, and I had to go to Loyola University to get a um, some music from a friend of mine. It was some charts, and we we're doing a gig that night. And he was a he was a teacher there, bass teacher, and uh, and so he said, "Come stop by and get these charts." So I was walking across the street at St. Charles, and the streetcar was coming, and the light turned red, so I had to stand and wait. Well, I get a tap on my shoulder and I turned around and it was the great trumpeter, Nicholas Payton. Wonderful, incredible trumpeter. And so, you know, I was a young, I was really young at the time. And the thing I always told myself was never ask 
a great player, like what do they think about when they're playing? But that went out the door. I said, Nicholas, man, I love your playing. And, you know, what are you thinking about when you're playing? And he told me, and it just stuck to me. I'll never forget it. He said, tension and release. That was, that's what he said. He said, tension and release. So I started thinking, well, how do you create tension and release? And how do you create tension? Well, first of all, let's talk about the whole scope of the solo. When we're taking a solo, we want it to almost be like a story. And so uh, what are the things that a great story has or a great book or a great movie? Well, it has an introduction. It has a long rising action. That's the majority of the story is this long rising action, this building of tension. And then you get to this climax and then 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 there's a release and then there's the, there's a falling action that's usually real quick almost like a roller coaster you go up like and you come down quick and then there's the conclusion so what are the things that what are the things we use to create this rising action so motivic development is definitely one of those things uh the this but, but there's lots of other things we can use to create this um, one thing is that we can, as the solo is developing, we can play higher up in range. So, but at the beginning of the solo, we start. Later in the solo, we're maybe, and then maybe towards the end, we're, we get, we use the range as, as, a, as a tool. So, at the beginning of the solo, maybe not start up here, maybe start more down here. So we can introduce our ideas here. And as the solo's going on, we can build up to, to a higher range. That's one thing. The other thing that can create that tension uh, would be the speed, how much, how, how many notes we're playing, or how fast we're playing. So, you know, at the beginning, we're, we're doing something like, And at the, later, towards the end of the solo, we're, you know, uh, we're playing more notes. So that and that. So that's another way. Um, uh, some. So, uh, let's see. So and then also there is um, there's how loud or soft we're playing dynamics. So. You know, if we're if we're maybe the beginning of our solo starts a little bit softer, and then as we build, we can build up louder. And that doesn't mean we can't pop in some some loud notes here and there, because that that happens too. I mean, our it does, that rising action doesn't have to be a smooth line; it can kind of do do this. But as long as the solo has that upwards trajectory, that's what we're kind of looking for. Uh, motivic development. Our motifs can start off more simple, like we like we talked about, and then you can start to interconnect them to make these longer lines. So I might start off with something just very simple, like this, uh, and then as 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 you're developing, you can take that same idea, you know. So that same little that da 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 that little pattern as we develop them, we just interconnect them, and that become that that creates some some buildup of tension there. So uh, that's that's another great great tool for for this type of soloing. Um, and then uh, let's see, oh of course you know playing outside. So we want we want to create a sense of normalcy, so that way something that the ear is used to, the familiar. And then we want to build uh, and, and build that tension, uh, and and we can use some of these different tools going outside. So go maybe start in, go out. You can work your way back in. So, but I probably wouldn't do this at the beginning of the solo. This is going to be as the solo is developing. So I'm thinking side slipping. It's a perfect thing to use here. So like, and maybe I'm up in a higher register. <laughs> You know, 
so it's, um, in and out, in and out, you know, and, and so that gives you that gives you some more uh, building of tension. I'm definitely not going to start start with that. That's going to happen as the solo develops. So all of these things are great tools that you can use in in your playing. These are kind of some conceptual things to think about, uh, and this is kind of what I think about when I'm playing. People say, "What do you think about when you're playing?" Well. That's kind of it. I mean, I, I, kinda, I think about tension and release. I think about that same thing that Nicholas, the great trumpeter Nicholas Payton, told me. He said tension and release, and it phew, just when it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow, that's it. That's all I have to think about. So yeah, that's uh, something to to chew on. And uh, and of course, you know, four and six is such a beautiful tune and such a great tune to to play this on. This is actually based on summertime too. So, you know, uh, quotes, that's another way to build. Hey, throw, throw the melody to summertime in this thing. And pe you'll hear people in the audience go, what? <laughs> you know, because they're, they're not used to, they don't realize that it is summertime. Or you throw some other little, um, some other little quote in there. And, and you'll get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of good, good applause for that. People really dig that kind of stuff. So quotes, I try not to do it too much because it can kind of get corny too. But something to think about. All right, so uh, on to, well, uh, I always try to do a little bit of gear talk. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so I started to think about, like, what, what, should, what should we talk about today? And um, uh, one of the things, um, the last lesson we talked about the Cummins guitar uh, as being uh, an instrument that... Um, uh, that would be great for someone who is maybe on a budget or wants like a, wants an instrument to take on the road. Uh, this week I'm playing the Linda Manzer guitar, which uh, I call her Rosie, and uh, th this instrument uh, is is one of the finest, if not the finest, guitar I've ever played. And uh, some things about it, and I've talked about this instrument before, but some things about it. Are, is that well it has all european tone woods uh it has a german spruce top and it has uh, well actually it's an italian spruce top and it has german maple back and sides and it's there well it's hard to see in the camera but they're very highly figured and uh, uh maple neck and all ebony appointments and i've had people ask you know like why do you, why, why do you need, you know, that level of an instrument? Well, you know, some people just don't see the validity in it. But when you play an instrument like this, you know, especially Linda's instruments, they are, uh, there's just, they, they're at another level. They just really sing. The thing that I really love about this instrument is its, is this, its ability to really project in the upper range. You know, I love... I mean, those notes just come out like a bell, real clear, and 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 they, they maintain thickness. They don't lose. There's no there's there's no sense of like um, a brittleness in this instrument. just has it um it just has it uh ken armstrong floating pickup um and uh you know volume and tone controller under here it's got a sound port We've talked about that I've, sh I've showed that in the last time but but um i wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about this instrument uh just you know i mean it is a seven string and you know the seven string is tuned to an a for for those who don't know and it's it's really great because it's just a fifth string down an octave and so you can you know instead of playing a chord like this you bring it down an octave it really fattens the chord up you can walk bass lines Thick. 
has a real thick sound on that bottom end. So those are those are things I really, I mean, I love that about the seven string. This instrument actually has a 640 scale, uh, which is, I don't know, I don't know, That's I guess that's maybe around 25 and a quarter, maybe somewhere between 25 and 25 and a quarter. And I have to tell you, I've played 25 and a half inch scale for a long time and, with, and loved it, absolutely loved it. But this instrument feels ext extremely comfortable. The, I mean, look at that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can see how easy that is to push down. It's it's nothing. And and she, Linda uses, a, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but she uses like a triangular type of fret. Um, I mean, I, I think the fret is like a normal fret, but I think she cuts it into a triangular shape. See that a little? It's like you see, like, it's like a, almost like a pyramid kind of, and I don't know, it, it, it really, they really feel great. And like, no, you don't feel the frets at all on the side. I mean, it's totally smooth. I mean, it's just, just exquisite. Um, you know, the great news I've been hearing from Linda and, and some of the other luthiers, Tom Rebecca and, and Chris Mirabella, good friends of mine, uh, Bill Cummins, is that through this pandemic, they're actually getting orders, which is a great thing because we have to keep them, uh, we have to keep them afloat because they're the ones that are gonna build these beautiful instruments for us. Uh, on this particular guitar, Linda put her scroll, says Manzer on it, and then it has the, um, it has the orchid, which that was something that I asked for. But uh, I know I've talked about this instrument before, but I wanted to get a little more in depth with it. And, uh, and then and next week we'll talk, we're gonna talk about uh, the Rebecca. I have a Rebecca guitar that'll be really fun to, to show. So, uh, Everyone stay safe, and hopefully, I got a haircut, which was nice. Feel, feel like a new man again, and uh, and hope hope everyone's safe, and uh, and keep playing, and uh, we'll we'll get through this. God bless and uh, best wishes. All right, bye bye.